Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management, home of the Flying White Horse. Today is Monday, September 26th, 5.28 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. Market continues to be in a correction. You can see over here on our trend gauge, all five of the major indexes that we track are trending below their short-term 21-day exponential moving average, their medium-term 50-day moving average, and their long-term 200-day moving average. Leaders additionally broke down late last week, so we are in bearish slash downtrend mode across the board at Revere. That means um, that means stay away, but we did take a tactical long today, and I'll explain that as we get further into this. So what happened today? Lower lows. We are now extended minus 3 ATR from the 21-day exponential moving average. If you followed us for a while, uh, you know that one of the arrows in our quiver is to take profits at plus 3 ATR from the 21 and get involved at minus 3 ATR from the 21 because the plain mathematical fact about it is that we are looking at a very strong possibility of a, re, a, re, a reversion to the mean when you're at the minus three ATR. Sometimes it takes a day or two, uh, but there are quite a few signs pointing to the fact that we're very stretched to the downside and the risk reward in my estimation is worth dipping a couple of toes in the water at this um, at this juncture, this is something that should be looked at as a short-term play, and uh, we will be taking profits on strength. Hopefully, we get that strength, and then looking to turn short into additional resistance levels on the way up. So you can see the numbers today, all red, G6, this is our six ETF growth proxy composite down 1.35%, S&P 500 down 1.03%, NASDAQ 100 was the leader today, only down 0.41% as relative strength. Uh, obvious most of the day in Tesla, Apple, and Amazon, Microsoft also. And... Um, that's the QQQs were actually uh, positive most of the day until late in the day. Dow down 1.1%, mid caps down 1.56, Russell 2000 small caps down 1.4. Nowhere to hide with bonds. They took a beat in today as interest rates made new highs. Global diversified 6040 stock bond down 1.21%. Grotection, we took that late. Um, that late uh, buy into UPRO and uh, it closed negative from where we bought it down just a sliver on the day, minus 0.04%. So let's dive into our process and the charts. I'll explain our thinking process here at Revere, why we do what we do. Uh, we are trend followers. When the market is above, trending above, it's short-term 21-day exponential moving average. That's the green line. The medium-term 50-day moving average, that's the red line. The black line, 200-day moving average. When we're trending up above all of those, we are as involved in the market as we comfortably can be. If we start to consolidate sideways, the market usually takes us out of some of our leading stocks uh, unless they continue to outperform, in which case we'll stay with them. But if we really start to roll over our stops, no question, we'll get hit. Uh, and if the slopes of the short and medium term uh, moving averages start to roll over, that's a big flashing yellow sign for caution. We break below the 200 day moving average. That's a big red light. Get the heck out of the way. Why do I say that? Because all severe bear markets take place below the 200 day moving average. They typically start. Uh, about 9 to 12% above the 200-day when you start pulling back. You break the 200-day. Now you're in the danger zone, the risky zone, the, the risk of a 20% or more bear market. If you're lucky, you get out of it unscathed with just 20%. Uh, right now, we're looking here. In July, we peaked at the bottom of 24.5%.
we came near those lows today, uh, bounced right above them, but actually new closing lows. The lows from uh, back in June were 36.66 and 36. Uh, 74 today we closed at 36.55 so we didn't make an absolute low the absolute low is 36.36.87 we came within seven points of that but new closing lows uh, for this correction not not a good sign there and how do we know to stay out of the way well it's just from studying history these bear markets when you get below the 200 day moving average uh, you want to get out of the way, maybe take a couple of shots when you either get really, really extended away from moving averages or when you reclaim some short-term moving averages. That's the way we play it. Um, you can see when we roll over here, uh, we avoided most of these, this big leg down here. This was the severe one. Started on uh, April 21st when we failed trying to get back above that black line, the 200-day moving average. Uh, we rallied off the lows from mid-June to early August, but we ran into this declining 200-day moving average. This is a case of it becoming resistance, and uh, we've been selling off since then with a couple of minor bounces, uh, but bad economic data and hawkish action from the Fed has really uh, hit the market uh, in addition to the rising dollar and rising interest rates. Uh, so we're near these lows. These two bars here, the last two, look very similar uh, to these two over here where we put in a temporary bottom in mid-June. That doesn't absolutely mean we're going to, uh, but again, we're extended about the same distance that we were to the downside. Uh, there it was 6.7. It was 6.7, but that's actually not as bad because um, you have to, we roll, today was day 21 since we rolled over. That gives you a truer picture uh, of when the trend changed and being 6.3% uh, below there, the ATR of the S&P right now is at 2.05%. So three ATR extended uh, risk reward now skewed to the upside uh, based on the way we take a, trying to take a non-emotional uh, look at it and go strictly by the numbers and what's um, what we see as uh, what's working in our favor. So uh, that's how we play it here at Revere. You're interested in this approach. Trend following is what we call it. Keeps you in the market during uptrends, gets you out of the market during downtrends. Please reach out to us. You can email Don or Dan at revereasset.com or phone 855 Real Wealth. That's 855-732-5932. There's your S&P 500. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100, the second of the five indexes that we track in every one of these videos. Why do we look at the indexes? Because 75% of stocks will follow what's going on with the overall indexes. Uh, in William O'Neill, uh, his system, which is our system, is built quite a bit off of that. Uh, the M in market is one of the key characteristics when you have to have that in your favor to be uh, invested in leaders in the market. And we just, we don't have the indexes. We don't have leadership right now. What we do have is a market extended to the downside, uh, interest rates extended to the upside along with the dollar extended to the upside. So reversion to the mean is uh, seems likely. Nothing's guaranteed. We'll, we'll still have a stop uh, in place on this. Uh, here's the NASDAQ 100, uh, not quite an undercut versus the lows from June. Let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average where we did make a lower low last week and another lower low today. Note the Dow is showing some relative strength over the last week and a half, which means it's going down less than the S&P 500. That typically happens when the market uh, turns to the uh, ultra bearish side as the typically uh, the NASDAQ 100 leads higher and it also leads lower. Let's take a look at mid caps here. Not a, people look, not a lot of people look at mid caps. We always do. This is the incubator for the next leadership uh, stocks. They graduate from mid cap to small cap as they continue to build sales, build earnings, build market share. Uh, we're right at the 400 level. Also extended to the downside on mid caps, small caps. Also uh, trolling near lower lows here. 
just not good action from the indexes, but again, you don't go down forever in the markets. It's not unidirectional. So those are the uh, those are the leading indexes, the five leading indexes. Let's take a look at the six components that make up the G6, the six growth uh, components, and see what we can see here. And there's not a lot of good to see here at all. Uh, you can see you're going to see that they're all trending below. They're downtrending moving averages, very similar to what the indexes are doing. And this is just one more signal to us to stay the heck out of the way away from growth stocks. The first one is IWO. That's the growth half of uh, the Russell 2000. Next up is FFTY. This is the Investor's Business Daily 50, uh, making new lows, certainly not shouting by me by any strength, uh, stretch of the imagination. QQQJ is the NASDAQ 100 of uh, the mid caps. Uh, also near new lows. PDP is a momentum index from Dorsey Wright, also near new lows below the moving averages. I mean, it's pretty much unanimous, but this shouldn't be surprising anybody. ARC K, not quite at new lows. Uh, I guess stocks can't go down forever, uh, as I said. And then the sixth component is MDYG. This is the growth component of the uh, S&P 400 mid caps also making new lows. Uh, the one stock that survived last week from the 21 over 21 was First Solar. Showed early strength, then the market faded. Uh, it closed below the 21. Some strength today. Uh, Las Vegas Sands. Any but any of the uh, casino stocks that have a big presence in Macau had a good day as. Uh, Chinese authorities reopened Macau for the mainland Chinese to start uh, visiting as I guess COVID has eased over there a little bit. Let's also take a look at uh, some other stocks that showed relative strength. BJ's back above the 21 with a nice bounce off of the 50-day moving average and some stocks that have broken down but did show relative strength today. Uh, Pinterest sitting on the 50-day moving average. Suave Shockwave, this is a recent leader that broke below the 21 and the 50, sort of a dead cat-ish bounce. We are still keeping this on our universe list uh, as it is a fundamental leader and does have a good story. Palo Alto had a nice gap up uh, on its last earnings report, which just failed miserably. Uh, relative strength today, but closing at the low of its range. Notice all of these uh, stocks that we're talking about are in they have a stochastic still trending lower below the oversold line. At some point, they will stop going down. As I said, these stocks don't go down forever. And what we're looking for now is what's going to be what's going down the least. And does that make it attractive the next time that the market turns into uh, an attempt at a bull run? And that's what we're looking for. HLIT, Harmonic Lightwave. I remember trading this back in. Back in 2000, 20 years ago, nice move for this today. Way too thin for us uh, in protection, however. And finally, PDD, one that recently fell off the 21 over 21 list, was at least positive today. Let's take a look at the uh, intraday action in the S&P 500. Uh, and you can see here we had this gap down. And that immediately put in the lows, and we got uh, bullish. We were up over a half percent, up to 37.16. Note this 37.16 is near the highs from Friday, couldn't fill the gap from Thursday. Uh, and then the sellers came in and we just started the frozen slope lower uh, down to 36.44, which was an undercut of Friday's low. But as soon as we undercut it, we reclaimed it. That's what you want to see. That makes it a false breakdown for the moment. This was another reason that uh, gave me uh, something in the plus column for whether or not to take this tactical long. Uh, and then we had this flag. We actually tried to break out of this flag, and this is where we took the position. Uh, but then it reversed and uh, closed lower, and we're down 0.04% uh, to the overall portfolio on this, which is what we were down today uh, on the day. Not a whole lot else to talk about. We're biding time here, waiting for uh, maybe a catalyst or uh, some good economic data to come in or just an easing on the dollar and interest rates going up. And they pull off at all. 
uh, let's take a look at those charts. Let's also take a look at the VIX, which made uh, new recent highs on a daily chart above all of the indexes, and it's above this 26 level, which is kind of the uh, the line in the sand that we put 24 to 26 is a range where you kind of battle back below uh, 24 is bullish above 26 bearish and that's where we are note we haven't made new highs on this anywhere near going back to the beginning of the year despite the fact that uh, stocks are near the new lows so that's a minor bullish divergence uh, let's also look at the US dollar UUP Yeesh, look at that. Uh, three gaps up out of the past four sessions, really getting extended to the to the upside. And then finally, let's take a look at interest rates. We'll look at the 10-year zero TNX. Just keeps, when you go higher and then you accelerate, sometimes that's looked at as uh, an exhaustion move. This won't go up forever, will it? It won't go up forever? Well, I'm going to say that it's not going to. How high it will go, we never know for sure. Let's look at the 30-year. That's the TYX. And um, also trending higher, but not as parabolic as the 10-year. Note the relative strength on these also. And as far as uh, the market goes, as Forrest Gump would say, that's all I have to say about that. So let's wrap it up. As always, like to hear from you, Don at RevereAsset.com. The phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. So wrapping up Monday, September 26th, Don Vandenborg reminding you it's not how much you made in the markets. It's how much of that you can keep. Just the facts here from Revere. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.